welcome back to FRC 4607 CIS podcast. I'm your host, Aaliyah. I've been on the team. This is my second year. Um, I'm our safety captain as well as a co-lead for risk analysis. I'm Alyssa. Um, this is my first year on the team. I am on build and I'm a junior. I'm Amelia. I'm team captain. I've been on the team for three years and yeah, I kind of just help out with everything. So, so to get right into it, um, let's talk about something simple right away. Uh, favorite flowers. Let's go. And why? Ooh. I Okay. In the summertime, it's lilacs. Because when you're like in town and you're just going like around town and all the lilac bushes are like blooming, it smells so Boy, good. So we good. have... I have three like, bushes at my house. We have, yeah, we have a couple at my desk. I so badly. We have purple and white. Okay, and but they the grow like a weed. Like, super pretty. They, they fall onto the ground, mm-hmm. and then, like, they grow everywhere. And it is kind of a pain to upkeep because they grow so fast. That is very true. But they smell so good. It also sucks if you have really bad allergies, like my sister does. Yeah. I used to get really, like, I don't even know the word, <laughs> but, you know. I used yeah. to, like, not be able to go outside because I would just, like, go into a fit of, like, sneezing at my desk. Oh, my bad. gosh. Pretty. Some of them are hard to upkeep though, like peonies. They that can get waterlogged true. and you need to have like a base underneath them. And if you don't do it right, they just collapse. And I, that sucks. I suck at keeping plants alive, right? So, um, for my aunt's kind of, yeah, she's my aunt. Her bridal shower, we went and like, um, did like these wood, like big wooden, like canvas mm-hmm. things. And so we got to like build the actual thing itself and then we got to paint on it with like stencils and whatnot. So I have a bunch of peonies on there, and so I don't actually keep plants in my room because I have like a snake plant or something in there, and it's so dead. <laughs> it I, probably- <laughs> I have this cactus that for some reason I got it when it was like smaller, and it's like, it's you know when you see in like the cartoons, like it's that one, but there's like four of them like in a circle. For some reason, they're growing out like away from each other. Like it looks like this, and now they're like falling down. Oh god! Do you know how much? Do you know how long they can last without water? Honestly, it has gone a couple months without water for mine. And then, like, I've dumped it in water. So you I, can see throughout my cactus, it's, like, green and, like, where brown. You and then, like, that's, you can that's see my favorite thing. Spots. And also, like, if you go to, like, Lake Superior, you know, the rocks where you can, like, yeah. see how the water is washed up on there. Different levels. But actually, funny story about water, right? So I work at a Christmas tree farm in the winter. And we have a camel there. Oh and God. so I was working. This is the one that's, like, 30 minutes out. Um, But I was working there, and there was this family. And they came in, and they were, like... Is there a reason that your camel doesn't have water? And I look at my boss and I'm like, I was like, you should probably go fill his water. And then they walk away and he comes back in and I was like, did you take care of the camel situation? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, the camel has like three weeks to like two months of water stored in its back because it drank like 10 gallons that morning. Yeah. It was ridiculous. I don't even know why that's relevant, but it was <laughs> ridiculous, and we all joked about it forever. It goes to show, if you don't know the animal you're talking about, Spoken. maybe you should not comment on how people are taking care of them. His name is Carl. Carl? Carl. I haven't been out to that Christmas tree farm in a long time. Which one? The one with the camel. There's two of them. Both of our locations have camels. Yeah, I think yeah. I was only at one of them, I think. But you want to know something funny on the topic of storing things for, like, months without water? Oh, Somehow, <laughs> so I was told that taking care of orchids was really hard. Yeah. Um, after I got two already, I was like, why not add a third one, even though I'm not going to take care of it? <laughs> and I haven't watered that thing in a month, and it's all three of them, and they're still alive. I don't want to know how they're still alive. I think it's some... Yeah, that's questionable, because usually you do have to water them, like, a lot. Yeah, you have to water them. It's Are you okay. sure they're not fake? No, they're not fake. Because <laughs> Aaliyah's been watering. Well, she hasn't been watering them, but... No, I still don't know how they're alive. Like, my cat's been eating them. Um, I'm st- I'm still concerned for my cat. Is that healthy for the cat, though? Probably not. Oh, well, uh, actually, she's diabetic. Have... No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. <laughs> um, don't, don't... I need to hear your best accents for which one like what no accent? anything oh, literally just your best accent well, for my role for english no I nope just your best yeah, no the role for for english you i have to do a very accent, weird southern accent um i'm gonna just do the line i know yeah <laughs> how many lines do you have i have one okay so far so far so far i have like, like three in the entire play i think have you the lion's part written pray you if it be Give it to me, for y'all know I'm slow and steady. And that's my line. And I have to say it like that. So, to give context to that, the play, 
10th grade accelerated English does a play every single year. It's based off of like a Shakespeare play. It's like a knockoff an, Shakespeare. It's like a knockoff Shakespeare because like the original one's six hours long. Yeah. Like it's a Midsummer's Night Dream or something. Yeah. yeah. And so you guys Midsummer just do like Midsummer's Night or Midsummer. It's just Midsummer. And, and it's so, so like just me- like comical. And, I, and the teacher that like pro- like hosts it like produces it is so hilarious because she makes you do the most random things and like the costumes are the most random the That's actions are the most random like this can is not a Shakespeare about- play this is like kindergartners that were told hey you can do this and then we get <laughs> yeah. to do whatever we want so we have a teacher um who plays as the queen for this but not um, this year though it's no weird. last year yeah. last year no um it's the funniest thing because you have a, a guy teacher who is willing to go all out in playing this queen role and he's like ah, ah, ah. <laughs> And it's so Remember funny. Remember popcorn? I was sitting in the front row no, last year and okay. I got showered in popcorn. So last year, um, our class did it and he didn't like know his lines. So we had to take someone's script and rip out his one line and tape it to his hand so he knew it. And then, so the part you're referring to, the popcorn, was not scripted at all. So the way it's set up is that he was the queen and then we had a king. And then they had a bunch of people standing around them. Like, kind of, like, in the U-shape, like, they were in the front. And then they had pillars in the back that were made out of styrofoam. They are meant to look like, <laughs> like, columns from, like, the Colosseum in, like, Rome. Mm-hmm. And he, someone from behind him pulls the wig off that he has on, and he has this huge bag of popcorn that you can get from, like, Costco or Sands Club. Yeah. Like, the huge ones. And he just flies like, it, makes it go everywhere. Like, so imagine is, fireworks, but just popcorn. popcorn. <laughs> like, it, like, launches everywhere, covering everyone, and he starts, like... Pouring it on people and like he runs backwards like in the movies when people are being really dramatic that their like wig or like something like embarrassing happened like he runs through the columns almost tipping them over on like the students. One of them, one of them was like one of them almost did someone to catch it. It was so hilarious because none of us knew that because I was unscripted and so the people on stage had to keep going with their scene. I remember being in choir and the teacher she was like she's like okay guys we're gonna go down and watch just we're just gonna go watch honors English their play yeah, and I was like okay and then for like a while I was kind of just sitting there and then all of a sudden like my brain was scrambled because I was like what is happening and like oh, no. it was absolutely ridiculous and everybody's like confused like everybody in the audience is yep. just like crying laughing because it's so like it's the most it's a series of the most random events it's just event after event after oh, event yeah. and nobody knows what's happening nobody knows what's going to come yeah. next <laughs> not even the actors know what's going on no literally no, i don't think he knew what he was going to do next because especially the way that it's cut like not even with without that teacher that did it was because you don't get the context in between the scenes to actually know why they're it's doing that yeah. like you get the funniest scenes from the shakespeare play put it into a half an hour to an hour skit and then that's it yeah it's absolutely hilarious it's great. Uh, so far, I'm loving it, especially since I don't have to do the most embarrassing parts other than roar, like, once, which, by the way, I don't even know how to do that. Like, <laughs> what am I going to do? Roar. <laughs> like, you know, imagine I go up on stage, or I go up there and I'm like, roar. <laughs> okay, if you could have any meal right now, what would it be? Ooh. I can't, oh, I can't see that. Oh. Um. <laughs> What's, I'm trying to think of the word, the meal. I, I always love fried rice, like, fried especially rice. homemade fried rice, and we load it. So, like, oh all gosh. the veggies, yes. all, like, the different types of meats and everything. I love that with a passion. Okay. Chicken beef Alfredo. Wellington. Beef Wellington. Chicken Alfredo is beef really Wellington. good. You want to know what else I've never had? Good. What? I've never had several brands of, like, I've never had, like, a lot of fast food. Like, Really? Yeah. That's right. We've talked about this. Yeah. You haven't been to Chick Fil A. No, nope. Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A, Panera, noodles. I've been to Chipotle one time. I've never been to. Also, I've never had Twinkies. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I ever not, have. You're not really either. missing. I was out always on much. Swiss rolls other than person. it's just like I like it's Swiss a childhood rolls. like memory kind of thing. Like you're missing out on the childhoodness of it, but like oh. you're not really missing out out on much of the flavor wise because it kind of just tastes like plastic. It's more of the fake. like nostalgia, like generational, yeah. like experience of it yeah. rather than like it actually tastes good because yeah. that stuff barely tastes edible. Amelia, I have a good question for you. What a when you go to Subway. <laughs> What is, what is your order? <laughs> okay, no. So I have a reason for this, right? Like, going to Subway, I get the meatballs with, like, with all the marinara sauce mm-hmm. on, like, white, like, white bread, like Italian bread, toasted. The, my reason why I get it, I just get that. 
The reason why is because it's basically, it's like garlic bread with marinara sauce and meatballs. Oh, that makes sense. Then. Like, literally, because when you toast it, it becomes, it's not, like, soft, whatever. Like, it's, like, gets toasted. Okay, at least you don't put spicy mustard on a meatball sandwich, which my sister does. Like, that is oh. so, like, she puts, Do you like, put spicy mustard on your thing? I don't like spicy mustard on anything. Oh. I don't like I mustard. literally, I have, like, yeah. the most so intricate, <laughs> the most intricate, like, well thought out sandwich. <laughs> but it's so like basic. So it's like, like I go so and I get I get black forest ham, I get American cheese, right? Okay. And then I get spinach, black olives, tomatoes, pickles, mayo, and extra vinegar every time. Same exact thing on what is the Italian urban cheese bread? Yep. Extra vinegar because they don't put enough pickles on it ever, even if you ask for extra pickles. And I like pickles. I and therefore I like much. vinegar. Okay, my subway <laughs> order is it's so stupid. Okay, I'm not gonna what lie. Do you, what? So I get like Italian urban cheese bread. And if any of you know, like the old, what they used to call the subway melt, where it's like yeah. ham, yeah. turkey, mm-hmm. cheese, bacon. But I would do that, either cheddar cheese, and if they didn't have that, no cheese, because I was that person. And then just the bacon heated. And then I would just get lettuce, black olives, light pickles, and then mayonnaise. Do you have taste here? buds? No. I burnt them all off drinking hot chocolate at the snow tubing. I got uh, hot chocolate, <laughs> and it was, like, boiling hot. Yeah. And I burnt, like, all my taste buds off. Um. It hurt so hard. My first, not my first day, but my first, like, I went to the light show in Duluth. Oh. And then I went to Bentleyville with my um my first boyfriend and my family. And I dumped hot chocolate down my entire, <laughs> my no. entire, like, when I tell you, I'm wearing, like, a sweater, like, a cute sweater, right? Yeah. And then I'm wearing, like, jeans, nah, it was, yeah, it was jeans. It was jeans, and then I had, like, boots on, and I had gloves, and I had a hat. Hot chocolate all the way down oh. the entirety of my outfit. And it was, like, not only down, like, the front of my shirt, but it also got in my shirt. So it burned. So we're, like, in the middle of it. There's no quick exits. No. So I'm just sitting there kind of suffering as we walk, and I, like, don't want to say anything because it's no. embarrassing. No. What are we getting You know, like, when you, like, hurt yourself so bad that, like, you can't even, like, audibly announce it? Yep. I just kind of, like, whimpered Me and kept and walking. Yep. You've had a lot of injuries. Oh, uh, okay. One of them actually really was not my fault. Okay, but how many injuries have you had? You've a had lot. four concussions. How many, like... Knee. Tore my MCO. Yeah, you've slightly. been on crutches a couple times. Crutches. Knee brace multiple times. You just got a really expensive one. Which are you even wearing it right oh, now? No. If you're supposed to. Um, do this one. Wow. <laughs> and then, yeah, you've See, had a lot of injuries. No, for they, being our safety captain, you're not really safe at all. <laughs> you stayed up the day that I got broken. I left early. Yeah, you left early for a doctor appointment, didn't you? It was no, it was a uh, confirmation. Church. We had, we were on a soccer team, and, like, I was, it was, I think, my eighth grade year. Yeah, your eighth grade year. And preseason, we were scrimmaging, and I fractured my knee in, like, three or four different places. Yeah. And I haven't played a sport since. Yeah. I felt so bad. I had also torn my hip flexor in seventh grade, and they tried to get me to play through that, too. That was really funny. (laughs) And I'm like... I've been knocked out, like, three times with a softball. Wow. Consciousness. Okay. <laughs> I have a huge theory on this, and I don't know if I really have the place to speak about it, because I'm not, like, huge into, like, body functioning. Functionality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but there's... People don't know... We don't have a real answer to what... What is the consciousness? And there's Jimmy been Cricket. some theories on it being in the neurons in your brain, like... It's in those nerve buds, but you can't test it, um, obviously, because it's unethical. Um, but I'm thinking, okay? So, some people cannot obtain knowledge the same way as others. So, what if we have some sort of database that you can choose to connect to when you need to receive this knowledge that you would like for studying, or something like that? Imagine how much smarter everyone would be, okay? Hey, you're describing the internet. No, no, I'm saying something, okay, no. Something that connects people, like, you can just get it immediately without having a phone. Like, all of the knowledge is already within your brain. Yeah. Like, you don't even need to, you so, just, like, the need so, for technology to be not You're describing the internet. 
There's like this core. The brain internet. This core, br- almost brain, okay? That the everyone Safari can of the brain. really connect to just at will, and then you share the knowledge. Because guess what? The internet doesn't have all the answers, but what if everyone's collective knowledge this was in this database, okay? We're going to call it database because it makes the most sense to my mm-hmm. brain. Like, what if I was trying to figure out calculus and I, like, haven't learned it yet? Just connect to the database and, bam, you know calculus. What's your opinion on lobotomies, Leah? I don't know what a lobotomy (laughs) is. But is it, so is it going to be, like, one person is just that, like, like, the center, like, the database? Or is it, like, actually, like, a building that has all of, like, the different files and everything in it? You know that's, what I'm saying? That's oh, that's a great. I question. zoned out a long time ago, and then I tried to zone back in, and everything is just going right well, over my head. There's like, <laughs> there's like this theory on how like electromagnetic waves like can connect yeah. to like things. So I'm thinking kind of like it's almost like a building, like not necessarily a person, but something that is almost like a machined person, like a machined brain. Yeah, like it's like artificially made. Yeah, artif- if artificially made brain. Yeah, just like how we can, from someone's past, like I think it was like lo- like so- along, you could recreate a new organ mm-hmm. from it. Like, what if you could use a dead person's brain and like recreate the brain tissue? And, yeah, and artificially create one that holds the database for this knowledge that people can tap into directly. That would be really cool. Where are morals here? Where do morals sit? Okay, that is what one are- thing. <laughs> That's. Like, there's not, I don't have all the details because there's not enough knowledge to precise, like, how the consciousness works, how brains could possibly connect. Like, there isn't enough information to connect it to morals. It's honestly just an idea. But I think it's different, too, because it's not like you're saying that brain would be, like, control. Like, it's literally, it would be the internet almost just in, yeah, you just have in access to it just thinking Mental about Mental internet. So you can choose, like, what you what you want to learn inter- and what you use it for. But interwebs, I suppose. Interwebs. So not really internet. The much, more but. moral part of it is just using, like, the dead person. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously they're right. not going to violate and take over, like, somebody who's, like, a deceased person. But brain. you also have to think... Like, but it's like you donate your body to science. Then, yeah. yeah. The only problem with that would be is if there's someone having to, like, upkeep and control this, like, thing. Yeah. There can be so much selfishness with it. So, I'd, like, it'd have to be something that could run on its own, and that is almost nearly impossible to make. Yeah. yeah. I can't say anything's impossible, because I can't It has to be completely self-sufficient. Yeah. Otherwise, honestly, it would just corrupt. Unless, okay, so this is going into, like, way, like, way theoretical. Unless that's something like brain an artificial hurts. brain creates its own, like, identity. And it, yeah. then it controls. Um, so, that would be, that was just my theory on that, which I actually had this conversation, like, late at night, and it wasn't very in-depth, so. No. I don't know, late night thoughts, shower thoughts, it's that's what that the was. Theory. It's one of the theories out there. You know, people have, like, shower thoughts, like, what if I went into outer space? Nope, my shower thoughts are, Hive um, mind. Hive mind. <laughs> that isn't actually a hive mind, but a. A non hive hive mind. Yeah. yeah. If you will. <laughs> Deja vu. Okay. Yes, I get deja vu. Deja vu so is weird. Bad. Yeah. No, it like it's like disorienting. No, it kind of like there's different perspectives on it and like what it is and what it's from because obviously there's different religions and different opinions. Like some people believe it's you living through your past life and you had an experience mm-hmm. that was like. No, I yeah. definitely had this happen. No, mm-hmm. like people think that, or there's people who just think like your m- m- mind created this situation where mm-hmm. you thought it had happened. Um. And it's just tricking you. Like, there are so many theories on it, but I like, can't prove any of it. Mine, I used to get deja vu so much. Like, I would get one at least, like, once a day. And none yeah. of it would be, like, I would say important items. Like, literally, it would be someone that I knew was going to walk, like, behind me. Yeah, mine was, I, like, would have dreams month. Like, this was before I, like, met any of these people. Like, I had a vivid mm-hmm. dream, like, playing cards with a group of people. I'm like... Who are these people? Where have I? And then not even after, like, this was after I joined a team. We were playing cards in a hotel, and I remembered the exact card numbers Mm -hmm. I had, and the situation was just play-by-play. And I'm like, how does that happen? Like, because I vividly remember having this dream. And you've, like, never met the people before, so you're like, how does your brain know that, Yeah. like, what the people's faces look like and everything like that? Yeah, it's it's crazy. Crazy. Lucid dreams are weird. They are weird. Wacky. Or, like... Sleep or like the dreams, <laughs> or like the not necessarily dreams, but when you're like 
on the verge of being asleep, and you're laying in your bed, right? Mm -hmm. And your eyes are closed, and you're, like, relaxing, and all of a sudden, you just just feel like you're plummeting. Like, you know how many times I've had to stick my foot out from, like, the side of my bed and put it on the ground to stop myself from falling Mm -hmm. when I'm in the middle of my bed, laying face up towards the ceiling? Like, you just feel like you're plummeting, like, eyes closed, and you're, like, you're not even quite asleep. There's so many weird theories around that exact event. Like, there's a religious one that's, like, apparently, like, and angels bringing you to heaven. Angels bring you to heaven and they, they drop, drop you. Which <laughs> that one's crazy. What's really funny is there's, we know medically why that happens. It's because your heart or one of your vital organs is slowing down so much to the point that you're about to die. <laughs> what? It, it's your brain freaking out and sending a shock through your entire body. That's what that kick is. <laughs> and it's up. That's terrifying. That's so terrifying. Because that happens to me so often. Me like, too. it's like, oh, almost died twice. You know what doesn't help? Your monster addiction. Thanks. <laughs> That's not helping. Be careful. That costs me money. It smells like... It's peachy. It's a peach. peach. It is peachy. <laughs> thank you for watching FRC 4607 CIS podcast. Um, we'd like to thank our sponsors, coaches, mentors, parents. They're the reason we are able to do this and be here. Um, and that is all for this week's podcast. <laughs> See you next time.